Hello everyone, it's Dawn here and welcome back. And today we're going to get cracking straight on with our first project in our series from Papercraft Society Box 36, which has been designed by the fabulous Sasha Reed. And if you were able to join me yesterday for the unboxing, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. So today we're going to crack on with our very first project. This is going to be a quick and easy one, so don't blink for more than about five seconds, because if you do, you'll miss it. So we're going to do an A5 card, or we're going to make an A5 card. And all I've done, this is a piece of A4 card. In fact, it's a piece of A4 heavyweight cartridge paper, but you can use cardstock if you want to. And all I've done is folded it in half. So that makes your A5. And I've taken the beautiful snowfall or snow flurry paper, and I've just used some glue stick to stick it to my card. So already we've got a beautiful background. Now, I've taken the sparkly, the pink sparkly paper, which is over here, if I can grab hold of it. There we go. And I have used, I'll just bring the dies in that I've used, as they're still on their original sheet, where they are at the moment. And I have used that one, that one, and that one, and those two small ones. So I'll just pop them over there. I laid them over there in the places that I wanted them and I cut them out and of course this we're not using today we're not using the bits that fell out and these are the bit or two of the bits anyway that fell out so we're not going to well we will make something with them today but we're going to make something with those for a future project but more about that in a few moments so today we're going to layer this one directly onto this one and again we are going to use our glue stick. So what I'm going to do, I don't want glue showing through the gaps. I know this is a glue that will dry clear, but I'm just going to be a bit fussy this time, which isn't at all like me, but today I'm going to be a little bit fussy. I think we're coming to the end of our glue stick, but we'll manage. I've got another one if we do come to the end of it. And I'm going to go round these because I don't want the glue showing through. Not that I think it will. So, in fact, if I, even if I put it on there, it won't show that much because of the snowflakes. So, that's all right. We'll manage. And that's just about the end of that one anyway. Just as well we don't need it anymore, isn't it? So, we'll just slide that one into the middle, like that. And I'm going to have the single large snowflake. Well, I suppose you'd call it a negative snowflake shape, which is the shape that the positive part leaves. But we're going to leave that like that. We'll stick all the, it doesn't matter if these bits don't all stick down. That's absolutely no problem at all. So you can still see, we've still got a bit of glue, but we can always just wiggle it out with our fingers. But that's okay. So you can still see that beautiful snow flurry behind the mat. So that's absolutely wonderful. And I am going to take one of the stamps, well, two of the stamps actually. I'm going to use the two that say Merry Christmas. No, which way is I have got them on my stamping block, but it's a bit difficult to see which is which. Oh, that one is the Merry. I'm going to give you a bit of a tip with these. If you're using any stamp for the first time, just take your thumb, your thumbs or fingers, but I usually use my thumbs, and just rub over it. What that does, it takes off the manufacturer's coating or film. You can't see it, you won't see anything and you won't feel anything, but it is there. And it will probably make a difference if you don't do that. So. I've already done that one to the one that says Christmas. So because I've got one of these blocks that have got a grid on it, I can line it up so that hopefully when we stamp it, it will be reasonably straight. And I'm going to use one of the former Papercraft Society ink pads. I'm going to, in line with the colour scheme that we're using, which is admittedly a non-traditional Christmas colour, but that doesn't matter. So I'm just going to dab it I don't want this too thick, so I'm just going to dab it over my stamps like that, my two stamps like that, put that to the side, turn it over, make sure you can still see and you should be able to, and I'm going to put mine about there I think. I'm going to lay that down and give it a press like that, and we have our Merry Christmas. Now I'm not going to do any more to that card. We're going to call that one finished. So that was a nice, quick and simple one. But we're not finished yet. Don't tune out just yet, because what we're going to do, I'm going to slide the card over there so that you can still see it. 
But what I'm also going to do, or well, the first thing I'm going to do, is put the, ink, the top back on the ink pad so that it doesn't get everywhere. I'm going to bring in the pieces that we cut out because what we're going to do with these, well, what we're going to do with, yes, well, all of them, I think. We've got three, three of the large ones. Um, the two, we're going to use all of these bits. And what we're going to do with these, one at a time, we're going to bend them. We're going to push up and bend down and we're going to shape these so that they're not quite so flat. And there's a reason for that. I'll think of it in a minute. No, there really is a reason. And we're not going to do too much to it, but we are going to lightly shape these because they are a bit delicate. But because the paper or the card is such fantastic quality, you don't have to be too worried about it breaking. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to start with that one, I think. And I'm going to lay that one down first. And this time I'm going to take some tacky glue. I'm going to use a ball tool. And I'm going to pop some tacky glue right in the middle like that, if it'll come out. So just a little blob around there. Shouldn't need much more than that. I'll put a little bit more on. But you don't really need much for this, she says. So another glue stick that's nearly empty. And I'm going to take the next one, but I'm not going to layer it on top. I'm going to offset it like that. I'm still going to keep the middle in the middle, but these other bits I'm going to offset and I'm going to hold that like that and spin that slightly to, or turn it until I've got it where I want it. In fact, I am going to get a bigger, a bigger one like that. It's a bit grubby, this one. I do apologise, but it's the one I usually use for my messy stuff for sculpting clay, but it will do the job just as well. So we're going to put that on there like that. And we're going to do the same with this top one. So again, we're just going to squeeze a little blob if we can coax some out. This one's nearly finished. I should have got a new bottle out, but oops. well, it's come out. It's just come in the wrong place. Oh, never mind. Oh dear, mucky butt. Doesn't matter, it'll dry. And we, again, we're going to offset that. You won't see that one terribly well, but we're going to offset that. And we're going to push. I'm just going to wipe that bit of glue off. In fact, that little bit of glue that's left will probably be enough to put these ones on. What we're going to do with these, we're going to put them in the middle. And rather than make them into a snowflake, we're going to make them into a little flower. So we're just going to pop another bit of glue there. We don't need much, which is just as well because there's not much left in the bottle. So that actually what's just squeezed out might be enough. So we're going to pop that one on there, use our ball tool just to squeeze it in place. And just to finish it off, I have got a bit of pink pearly bling just to act as a center. And I'm going to pop that on there like that. So there we have finished our flower. We're not going to use it on this particular project. So if I take my my mat away, if you're going to do this type of thing, it's always best to use. This is an old mouse mat, so it's always best to use a mat because you need some a spongy mat just to give it a bit. It's easier just to shape your flowers if you do it that way. So we've done two projects today, really. So we've done that one. This is our main project for the day. That's our card. That's our flower. The flower we're going to keep and we're going to put that on a project that we're going to do later in the week. So just to recap, we have made a card and we have used mainly the, st the um, not the stamps, I beg your pardon, the dies. So we've used those dies to make this card and the papers, of course, and what we've left, what fell out, we've used to make a flower. So I hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful. I was just having a little look to make sure you can still see because I've got the sun pouring through this onto my screen and I can't see a thing. So there we go. There we are. That's your lot for today. I will be back again on Wednesday with another project from Papercraft Society Box 36. So I hope you can join me for, for that. And thank you incidentally to our new subscribers. Lovely to have you on board. And of course, thank you for all of our long term subscribers and those just popping by. Lovely to have you with us too. So I'll see you again on Wednesday. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Take care, everybody. Have fun. And as always, happy crafting. Bye bye for now.